How's it going? Hope you're all doing well. So this is the Boston Bruins season preview for 2021, the third installment of it. And yes, yeah, so we're just going to take a look just like how we did previously with the Arizona Coyotes and Anaheim Ducks and kind of see where the Bruins are going to go from where they are right now. So the Boston Bruins finished 44-14-12 and last year and they, they lost in the second round to the Tampa Bay Lightning and it was pretty expected because the Tampa Bay Lightning were definitely a powerhouse team this year and anyone who was going to run into them was most likely not going to make it out of that series alive. So this team was very carbon copy of the team that went to the final previous the previous year against the St. Louis Blues and was perfectly capable of definitely getting back to the final, but it was just a bad matchup in the playoffs that led to them being eliminated. Uh, David Pasternak tied with Alex Ovechkin with 48 goals, tied for the Rocket Richard Trophy, and so yeah, they shared that award, and hopefully he can maybe capture one soon because he looks like he's for sure capable. And also just remember that this was in a shortened end of the season, and so could have been definitely was going to be over 50 goals for Ovechkin and him. So uh, it's kind of up in the air for who would have won the Rocket Richard. And another accolade for the team was that Bruce Cassidy, their head coach, won the Jack Adams Award for Coach of the Year. The biggest loss for the Boston Bruins is definitely the loss of Tory Krug. Now, it came as a surprise to him and the Bruins that he signed that seven-year deal for the Saint, to leave to join the St. Louis Blues. He had every intention of coming back to Boston, and obviously they didn't release details of what exactly happened, but obviously some... Uh, expectations on each side I feel like didn't match up and now the Bruins have a huge hole on defense which they're gonna need to fill. Only addition that they got for the forwards are Greg McKegg and Craig Smith. Now Craig Smith is likely gonna slot in on the second line as a winger to David Krejci and Krejci hasn't really gotten any of the line mates that he's deserved over the last few years and all throughout his career really. Craig Smith will definitely slot in nicely, and although he's not like a superstar or anything, I think it'll just be a nice complimentary piece that maybe Krejci can utilize a little better than he was given last year. Now, this team relies on the power play heavily, and if it's not clicking, the Bruins aren't clicking. So when Pasternak's not scoring, and Marchand's not, and Bergeron isn't, and they're all not contributing, the Bruins play, their spot in the standings definitely shows that they're not producing or playing well. Now with Krug leaving, the Bruins power play takes a huge hit and likely Matt Grizzlick's going to have to come up and be that replacement piece for Krug as he was definitely a huge piece to that power play and a big piece to the puck movement that happened on the power play along the blue line. And Grizzlick I think is a good replacement but he's not going to be Tory Krug. Now obviously the candidates to fill Krug's spot long term are two of the young guys which is Jacob Zborl and Matt Grizzlick, and I think right now it's obviously Grizzlick because he's the most impactful, best skating, and best puck moving defenseman that they have. Now along with the, back to the power play for a second, so if the season does get underway soon in January, uh, Pasternak and Marchand are already set to miss the beginning of the season, and Marchand is supposed to be back in January, and Pasternak is supposed to be back in February after having uh, both of them having some off-season surgery with the recovery time being five months. So obviously that can mean they can be off to a really bad start and their spot in the standings can take a hit right away because without those two, a huge part of their power play, that can be the nail in the coffin for the Bruins very early on in the season. So onto the goaltending. Tuka Rask and Yaroslav Halak are going to be the tandem. They made that clear that these are their goalies and they're not going to go with anyone else. They don't have any young guys that are coming up challenging for the spot and they don't have their eye on anyone else. And if they can be the best, these guys can be the best goalie tandem in, in the league, if not one of the best. Because if Rask can find that Vesna caliber play and Halak can be that elite, elite backup or 1A goalie, the Bruins will have no problem with their goaltending. Now on to Tuka Rask for a second. My personal opinion is that the Bruins fans and a lot of sports fans were just way too hard on Tuka for his decision to leave the bubble in the playoffs or before it even started. And he wanted to go spend time with his family and that he had children and that they could, they were kind of in that risk 
uh, bracket that he thought it was more worth spending time with them, which I totally agree with. I mean, like, you put your health and your family first before sports, and even though it's his job, he, took, he put family first. Now, he got a lot of flack, and I, even just personally, like, just looking on Twitter and everything the night that that was announced, it was a lot of fans of the Boston Bruins, because I went straight to the Bruins page and looked at the replies, and it was a lot of them saying that he should be let go, and he's a disgrace to the Boston Bruins, and he let them down. That's hard. That is them being really hard on him, and they're already at, hoping that they trade him or something like that, which would be an, a colossal mistake. Because right there, Rask is one of the backbones to the team, and he is a lifelong Boston Bruin. And although he hasn't won a Stanley Cup by himself, he has one as a backup, he's brought them to two Cup Finals, mostly on his back. So I think he deserves a little bit more respect. So ultimately, I don't think anything's really going to change from last year except for Krug being gone. So... I'm going to say that they are going to make the playoffs along with everyone else. Again, like a whole lot of things would have to go severely wrong. Um, obviously injuries you can't really control, but injuries happen to every team. Just how bad it gets is what usually dictates a season. But as long as all these big pieces stay in place, including just, you know, their goaltending staying at least good and it can get elite. They've shown that tandem can get elite and their power play. They just need to play good in their own end with the loss of Krug. Although he wasn't the best defensive defenseman, it just means that there's going to be guys having to fill a spot and fill a role, which maybe they not, might not be that accustomed to. So that's my prediction and preview on the 2021 Boston Bruins. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, if you agree with what I said or any of my takes on anything. And let me know where you think the Bruins will finish next year or if, how deep you think they can go in the playoffs. Uh, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoy this so far. I'm going to be doing all 31 NHL teams. Hopefully by the end of the month, I'll have them all done and yeah, I'll get to your team as soon as I can. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.